back. Um, I worked on my reputation with uh, some of the different things, trying to get to one spot of uploaded. Uh, I cleaned out my inventory, put a bunch of stuff in stores, some of the cool items, equip better gear for some of the people, some more better uh, melee weapons for some people, better guns. Um, yeah, stuff like that. So let's go back down. Oh, I went out right now. So let's go visit the plants I need to visit for the. Um, Oh. Let's do this. I always keep my options open. Ah, Selena Void Star of Unvalence. Has she ever turned? I hope the sacred dom document trusted to you last time has not successfully passed through the approval procedure. Here's your paper, complete with seals. Dr. Lawrence is on the old woman's nose. I've a subtle hum as she adjusts the magnification. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, indeed. It is perfect. The seals are authentic, so we may continue with the certification procedure. Follow me, please. This is your queue and your ticket number is 394. When it is your turn to be seen, the ranking prefect will review your documentation again and sign the official certification for Jai Hadari to possess a Mercatum Tabulae Official. You'll have a bit of a wait, but it will be worth it in the end, yes? Is this some kind of joke? Hardly, in accordance with decree DA58, DA Clause 21, Citizens of the capital world of the Bond of Valencia's Protectorate must submit their petitions at one of the assigned windows of the waiting hall. The decree makes no mention of the rogue trader being exempt from this rule. But must queue, then queue I shall. And I would bid you good day. May the law and the emperor keep you. Sixteen days later. Always keep your eye on the prize. The queue hums with thousands of voices. Someone has rolled out bedding and is setting down to sleep. Someone is playing some bizarre music luncheon. Many are praying. Several highborn petitioners are debating who is here on the most important business. You have to admit, the magnificent administrative machinery of the Imperium isn't without its rough edges. Guy yeah, smiles sheepishly, I think you. What a thrilling adventure this is turning out to be, Shereen. I've never seen anything like it before. And sometimes it's good to take a break from constant traveling to give all the hot-blooded newcomers a chance to cover themselves with glory without us in the way.
eight hours. We're 285. Proceed to the available window for like three something. Don't take me. What torturous trial have we let ourselves in for? I almost wails in despair. So much pressure time loss. We've only moved three places ahead. At this rate, we'll be old and gray before we get out of this queue, Shereen. Don't forget, you are the reason we are here. Ah, that is, was the will of the Exalted One, Shireen. And the Exalted One has granted me insight as to how, with a simple wave of your hand and a few wise words, we can ease our arduous weight. The simplest way to make these lowly subjects bow down before the blinding radiance of our title, Shireen. The second option requires a little more patience. We've already found our first uh, compassionate citizen who is standing 50 paces ahead of us in the queue. Simply offer the right words to unlock his heart, he will gladly swap tickets with you. And also, you have the power to solve the problems of some petitioners, removing their need to visit a coveted window. After all, is there anything an ordinary citizen would want that is beyond the power of the conqueror of the stars to grant? We shall solve the problems of the common people. A wise decision, Shireen. Old traders always say, if you can solve a problem with hard cash, then there's just the cost of doing business. Oh, Exalted One, could today be my lucky day? No longer will I have to stand in this hall, waiting day and night for my turn to come. For this kind lady of House Valencius is a benefactor of the downtrodden, and she has solved my problem? Steam lady, take pity on this poor youth as well. I will give you everything I have. I swear before the Emperor. Only help me solve my problem. We need not everything, poor wretch. Only your place in the queue. My lady, I have been in this queue for more for two dozen moons already, trying to get a permission slip to wed my fiance Zazi. Fortunately, the service of the administrative refused to grant without the signature of a highborn sponsor. Out of my way! Esteemed lady, my eighth offspring has lost his mind. He has decided to renounce his family, his noble title, and his talent as a heal healer, all for the sake of some terror away from the mid-levels. And even with the camera will put an end to his studies and the university, but should Dargonus and the office medic be deprived of a capable surgeon because of a passing fancy? Zazi is a healer too, and she helps the people of the hive a great deal more than any lily-white surgeon with a diploma. I do not want a life of idleness in spite of Dargonus like you. Now when I know there are thousands of unfortunate people in the lower levels who need my help. I have no interest in your little drama. I will sign the paper if you require a sponsor. Thank you, my lady. I promise I will tell my children and my children children of your kindness. You have an interest in your doing business, Shereen. I'll keep that in mind. Your eyes are light with interest as you watch the young journey. An old man, after allowing you a brief pause, a hunch rag him up and approaches you. The old man's toothless mouth breathes out a putrefying cloud of air as he speaks only three worlds. Death or life. You are here to request mortification so that your organs should go to your granddaughter as an inheritance. She will hardly want your worn out body parts, old timer. Servitor, disposal. Only now do you notice the tattoo on his right hand, the symbol of the Death's Administrative and several interlocking chains. It seems the fellow is the property of a prefect of this palace. The granddaughter of the poor rich was turned into a servitor 16 Dargonus years ago. And after a recent accident, she was listed for disposal. Now this old man is volunteering to be spare parts for a soul as tin can. May the exalt with one keep me from such a fate.
I will give the order for your granddaughter to be repaired, but if you wish to be with her forever, you will also be subject to the servitude of and perpetuitous. Yes, I understand. Emperor, watch over you. Interesting. So that is how the ruler of the world, of, the ruler of worlds and all the stars in the sky, acts when she has an unfortunate on the edge of her magnificent orbit. Jai nods pensively, and affects the next petition forward. Mature woman in a finely made but threadbare dress creature. I heard you were helping those in need. Well, my family is devastated. My life's work, all my shop selling rare hats, burnt to ashes. I'm living out of my last years as a widow, alone, in the cold, deserted manner, without servants, diversions, or delicacies befitting my status. Perhaps I can rebuild this hat shop of yours. That's a wonderful idea. Take my place in the queue here. I insist. I will leave my details with your retinue and go. Well, that was amusing. Paid off the last few unlockers who were willing to give up their place. Pity they are all so amenable. John inspects the ticket she there holds and nods with satisfaction. We move forward considerably in the queue, Shireen, but you aren't ready to stop there, are you? Since Argenta, for instance, she could engage the people in a prayer or tell a story about some saint or other in exchange for their queue tickets. The people would be amazed if you show them your tame Zenos. They'll drop everything they're holding, including their ticket, and come gargle with her. I guarantee it. You could also ask a juror to use her talent. On second thought, nope, that could be more disastrous than a suddenly erupting volcano shrink. Forget that. Wait patiently. Another eight hours go by, the queue has hardly moved. The adept in the next window has was dealing with rebelling machine spirits and his cogitator. So the pitch Petitioners from that you were diverted to the middle of yours. <laughs> Serene, you're a saint. Have I told you that before? You must be, because I don't see any other reason you would show such firm but senseless patience. Can we please hurry things along? Be patient. I have a thing to show the chief. The next hours pass surprisingly peacefully. Nothing unusual happens. All the certification officers are at their windows and are accepting petitioners. You have even started growing accustomed to the sounds and smells of the power of the place. Well, Shireen, maybe this time you'll lose patience with being patient and decide to move things along a teensy bit faster. Be patient. Repeat, we're going to wait patiently. The hum activity returns to the queue. Petitioner exchange glances, clutching their paperwork. After a few seconds, realize that the number being called out by the servo skull for the third time is the one on your tickets. You know what gets better with time, Shireen? I'm a second love making. Remind me that if I ever ask. Remind me of that if I ever ask you to stand in queue again. What are we waiting for, Shireen? Let's go. We have another couple hours with the certification officer to get through. The certification officer leans over the document, his smoothly shaven head gleaming, his augmented ocular eyes were as the lenses zoom in and out. With quiet scratching sounds, the concentrate quills that serve in place of the officer's fingers make notes on a fine sheet of paper. The, the document is hereby certified. Return to the Master of Seals in order to proceed. May his light and wisdom guard you. Next! All right. Let us not dawdle. The Temple of Law and Order greets you, Selena Boyd Star Von Boyd. Yes, you have returned with all the necessary paperwork, I presume? Here, all the seals placed by a certification officer. Wonderful. The Emperor blessed you with patience greater than the opportunity apportioned to ordinary mortals. 
mortals. Allow me to verify the authenticity of your document for the final time. Yes, yes, confirmed. Everything is in order. And this one, ah, the seal is smudged slightly. Lord Scorpion, scratch out my eyes. Now what? But that came out of nowhere. Hmm, I suppose I can overlook it, given the rest has been certified correctly and promptly. Congratulations, Jai Hadari. You are now the holder of the Mercatum Tabulae Officiale. Do not forget to repeat the certification process every 100 Terran cycles. Uphold the law of the Imperium proudly and honorably in the worlds of the Coronas Expanse. It's every 100 years. One more thing. Loss of the certificate is a grievous transgression, Mr. Sidari. Lose the original document and you will be unable to regain your status as an official trade representative. Not even with the Rogue Trader's endorsement. Yes, yes, esteemed Mark. Give me the certificate already. Come on, come on. Praise the exalted one who saw me through all these trials, Shireen. This is something to tell the grandchildren about. How a humble mortal became a trade representative of the Imperium. Let's not bother the Lamar any longer, Shireen. Why don't we discuss our next steps on the ship? Let's do this. Maybe it'll even be voice to save me my. They might. Is voice. there money to be made? Heaven forbid. Something happened. Rise to the top. Light of my eyes, give her a boons and savior of the needy. From now on, two sons will grace the firmament of the Fon Valencius Protectorate. One bright and powerful like the rogue trader herself, and the other slightly more humble, like her unassuming partner, the diligent owner of the Mercatum Tabula Officiale, and all around delight, Jai Hidari. As I promised before, my crew will be your eyes and ears across the entire expanse, Sherin. Just give them time. And of course, the assistant to official trade representative Jai Hidari is already rushing to Dargonis to deliver goods of rare and exquisite quality to you and your people, O oh mistress of many worlds. And once again, thank you, Sherin, from the bottom of my humble heart. And is that the extent of your gratitude? I actually have something else for you, Sherin. Jai smiles because his spiritual leans forward, hot breath burning in here. The culture shamelessly holds your gaze, ignoring the disapproving looks of surrounding officers and awaits your reply. This is not exactly what I had in mind, but you're not opposed. Oh, I most definitely am not opposed, Sherin. Jai greedily kisses you to the indignant murmurs of your audience. The sweetness of your lips, Shireen, clouds the mind better than Calixian wine on a balmy day. But you did not think I would just let you go, did you? A humble gift in return for all the trouble. May the Exalted One keep watching over the path that you tread. help you acquire a merchant certificate. Oh, Shireen, thank you for such generosity. I will humbly wait until you steer your vessel towards Dargonus. The Mercatum Tabula Officiale. It sounds almost as majestic as the warrant of trade. Is there a sweeter subject in the universe to discuss, Sherry? You have my full attention. You like being with me? Ask the Rose if it likes to receive the kisses of the sun every morning. Ask the Sand Dune if it likes to feel the caressing and playful touch of the wind. Ask and hear my answer, Sherry. Then let us both be silent together about this beautiful feeling, Sherry. Oh, I have no doubt you will. Okay. What do we got? My request to go down to... 
first of all, on the road, just check something out. So now we're going to try before we complete the crowning ceremony. What colonies do I need to check out? Milestone and The Lord Captain Retreat Stewart study to re reflect on recent events where a train of thought is earned by a muffled creak in the door and sound of footsteps. This is the happening. Oh, Doctor, I finally find you in this dwelling. Yearly comes closer and smoothly makes an unfamiliar gesture with her hands. This symbol has many meanings humility, grief, loss, shame, regret. I hope you'll accept them all because I am sorry for what happened to your world, to your subjects, to your palace, and for what my kid did to them. Thank you, truly, thank you. Yuliette shudders so slightly that she almost misses. it. She opens her mouth and turns away, searching for the right words. My words will not heal the wounds nor bring back the fallen. They will not restore your protector, however. Yuliette falls silence. Her deep, piercing ace seems to reach out into the very depths of your soul. Yuliette? Look, Alan Tech. The gaze of a child of a Syrian can find deeper than a monk cave, and I can see all the heaviness that has accumulated in your soul during your travels. I see it in your gestures, in the tilt of your head, in the change in your scent. If you will allow me, this is the first time you have heard your yet sound so indecisive, guilty. I will help you cast off this burden and cleanse your soul and mind of worry. The burden of my responsibilities has indeed weighed heavily upon me of late. Together we can try to ease that burden. How exactly are you going to help me? It is difficult to describe it, fact, but your soul shines bright and your mind is strong enough for you to be able to immerse yourself in your own mind and cleanse it of unnecessary cares. I'm still not sure that your species is capable of such a thing, but it is worth a try. If nothing comes out of it, then the only thing you will lose is a small fraction of your time. And I will be your guide on this journey. I will help you enter the meditative state to get to know you. Of course it is if you let me. Immersing yourself in your soul is a deeply intimate process, but you will not be able to do it without me. Yulia thoughtfully brushes a strand of red hair away from her face, and I promise you, Alan Tack, that I will not judge you. You, your world, or anything that takes place inside it, we will only see what you want to see. Embers of genuine curiosity glimmer in her emerald gaze. To know a human soul is a unique opportunity for an Aldari. Nearly its uncharacteristic caution and uncertain by the teeth also discomfited by her own keen interest. 
Very well, Yuliet. Show me my inner world. We need to find a suitable place, some place quiet, serene. Let go of everything. I'll attack. Doubts, fears, emotions. Cast off the weight of your body. Clear your mind. Good. Now try to look inside your soul. Look at it shining timidly. Doc. We did it, Arotax. So far, your world resembles the real one. But soon you will learn to go deeper. Remember that when here is just a reflection of your thoughts, feelings, desires. Do not be afraid to look them in the eye. have a backup plan. Everything you now have will serve you on a silver platter, but you deserve it. Fresh blood soaks in priceless thick cobble. It's forming an ugly stain under the corpse, your corpse. All sending beings are afraid of death. You have to accept the fear of birth to bring you rid of it. I always keep my options open. I'm only with you because you're throwing power. I didn't think I actually liked you. It's too fast for me to read, sorry. You already forgot me? Oh, don't ever forget me. Not even for a month because as soon as you turn away. And that would be probably actually a legitimate fear. Keep your wits about you. Always keep your eye on the prize. Is there money to be made? More stuff out there. Are you I always have a backup plan. Oh, this is... Oh, yeah. 
interesting actually. Rise to the top, or get left in the dust. Let us not dawdle. What is this, Monkey? The worst thing Cobra Echo that has made the soul's home seems to own me in your head. A strange feeling envelops your body. You feel yourself become lighter than air, and inside your mind, your thoughts are racing at incredible speed. You are not yet aware that you are looking through the eye of your ghost echo and observing from afar. All at the same time, the inner world changes under the force of your will. You cannot control your own echo. You cannot do something that you would not dare do in the real world. When your soul echoes touches the ghostly hand of the Adari, the real yearly approaches in fear and involuntarily pulls your own hand back. Please, Avantak, this may be your world, but I do not do that again. You know, it's where, where's echo across your world and the ghostly figures begin to disappear. The world around you starts to start to end. It's time to return, Elatak. Your soul is not even strong enough to endure prolonged immersion. Take a deep breath, and You wake up from your meditation with a sense of vigor and unusual calm, as if you have just taken a shower under a freezing waterfall or delivered a speech in front of thousands of subjects and your heart swells with compiled adulation. So in a voice are you were awake. Really, it starts at her own words, realizing that this is the first time she has ever called you by your name. Your soul shines too radiantly for a human, despite all the litter that had accumulated in your soul. You can get rid of the litter, but the light, try to preserve it, Selena Void Star. It draws the eyes like a bright star in the night sky. Of course, your world's not as beautiful and serene as mine, but I was glad to see it. Thank you for showing me this part of myself. My heart sings for I have helped you find peace, even if only for a short while. Until we meet again, Alatek, may the stars guide us along the safe roads. Seen events. According to the ancient chronicles and maps handed to you by the pilgrim. This icy planet used to be a prosperous imperial colony, however a sharp change in its trajectory brought upon by the warp anomaly raging in the system caused the world to distance itself from the local star. In less than a decade, the planet's surface was completely encased in ice, sealing a wealth of machines and artifacts of the imperial inside a glacial tomb. Either the Pilgrim played a practical joke in you, or the power of your augurs is insufficient to penetrate the endless layers of ice encasing the world.
that stuff puncture is poisonous. I need the adamantine going for what's this? Oh yeah. I need the adamantine going for what I need it for. Anyway, the first from the ship's log lead to an unremarkable star system. The auger crew report that the race cannot register anything worthy of Lord Captain's attention. Was this log entry just someone's idea of a joke? If someone has decided to mock the rogue trader, they are playing a dangerous game. The winter scale dynasty outpost hail Selena Void Star Bottom Points and thanks her for the help. The locals are indebted to her. Glory to the rogue trader. Let's see what I can do here. Anomalous warp storm has cut the system off from the rest of the galaxy and is present for the driving, driving the population insane. Warp pair search to protect the subjects. So. Once the storm has passed, the subjects thank the God Emperor for his mercy. A ship bearing refugees from Witch Girl's domain arrives in orbit. The survivors claim their son was stolen. Provide the refugees with shelter. The fresh blood brought with it new discoveries and knowledge. The second manifestation leads to the opening of a warp breach in the middle of one of your colonies. Wait for the breach to subside. Warp energies disfigured the earth and people in the area. Having gathered their bloody harvest, the sorcerer's powers disappear without a trace. The delegation of Dukari arrive at the colony. The Xenos offer the Monkei the chance to willingly bow before them. Attack. The battle against Xenos takes an inconceivable number of human lives. Uh, an incredible find has been made on Fallstone Lord Captain. A lost volume of St. Keith's Lost Diary has been found during the restoration of his crypt. According to his records, members of the Order of the Hammer are able to find the crypto arc containing a relic of St. Cognatius, the Crucible. Keith's writings are, on it are vague. It is called the Sculptor and Transformer, granting life and grace. The explorators have sent a delegation claiming the treasure. The heated dispute has been going on for many days.
If they all need the crucible so badly, then they should agree to alternate service to do it. Let's see. What is the meaning of the dispute? Tech priests claim that the privileges of the Depths of Mechanicus obliged the Order of the Hammer to hand any sacred archaeotech over to them. Allegedly, the crucible should be considered not as the personal belonging of the saint, but rather as a temporary possession entrusted into his care. The Order of the Hammer rejects this thesis, insisting that the right to care for these sacred objects belongs to the Ecclesiarchy's cult, and since Cognatius was canonized, then the crucible should be regarded as a blessed relic, not archaeotech. And how fierce are the deliberations? Quite. The discussions have been happening now for more than eight cycles without interruption. Both sides have provided more than a hundred legal experts and have put forward around 4,000 theses, arguments, and testimonies. The Special Administrative Commission, comprised of 200 armed clerks, has arrived to pass the verdict and enforce law. This is probably the largest religious dispute in the expanse's history. Prelate Nygmus does not seem to be too keen on fighting. It seems that he is subtly preparing the order for the loss of this dispute and is trying to avoid an uproar in the priesthood. What say my companions? It is likely that the research containing the ancient treatises and archival repositories of the Adeptus Mechanicus will provide factual information on similar precedent. I can spare some of my computing power to find such a case to provide my brothers and sisters with the information that is necessary to win this dispute. I believe the chronicles of the Amelanian Conclave describe mystical miracles witnessed by zealots while praying in an ancient banner of St. Capius. Should the crucible form a similar miracle, then no doubt it, doubts will remain that it is indeed a holy relic, not the property of the Adeptus Mechanicus. <coughs> Shireen, do you know the best motivation to make your enemies ripe for the compromise? The danger of losing any sort of benefit. It is within your power to take the crucible for yourself using the privilege of your warrant if you so desire. Why do you not imply such a possibility to the parties involved? Jai is right. Make it clear to all of those involved that if they will not come to a consensus, then I will take the crucible for myself. Let's see how long them it takes let's see how long it takes for them to come to a consensus now. As soon as news of the rogue traitor's bellicose stance on the crucible reached the ears of the disputing sides, they unanimously decided to start looking for a compromise. It only took them several cycles to reach an agreement on their collective maintenance of the crucible. In the process of forming their alliance, the monks and tech priests have discovered a surprising similarity between them. Both of them hold strong conviction and devotions to the relics, and thus, both sides found the strength to see one another as a true like-minded supporter, not mere reluctant allies. Research into the crucible has identified it as a device for surface terraforming. Fueled by the geothermal energy of the planet, it could turn a wasteland into a blooming garden. However, a way to launch it has yet to be found. So now let's go celebrate on the other place. If you, if you find a spare minute on football when you're not setting your lackluster fates, I'd be delighted to see you at my Amor car in the Amescius. I'll tell Octi to set aside some decent money in case you decide to grace our humble party with your luminous presence. Amorakar? Is that some kind of celebration? It is an occasion celebrated on my world, Efrit. It is a day when a person shows by their accident they have reached maturity, that the spirit is en ennobled. Among the Ephritian nobility, this day is considered more important than other symbolic events, such as the first cry or the day of repose. And by a wonderful coincidence, my Americar happens to fall on the day when I also wish to celebrate my acquisition of the Mercatum Tabulae official. It would be my pleasure to attend your party. The lowly regulars of the MSGS will be telling their great-grandchildren about the time they had the honor of witnessing your dazzling visit to that unworthy dive during 
This is, of course, if they live long enough to see their great grandchildren. Keep your wits about you. Always keep your eye on the prize. This could be an opportunity. Keep my options open. Is there money to be made? Nothing's impossible for this old officer. Oh, where is she? That's who's missing. You easily spot you easily spot Jai and the group crowded around the table. The extravagant luxury of her attire and her gleaming augment set her apart from the rest. Singing, she exclaims, "May the gravitational wells of your worlds never lack for a grip, just as my heart never lacks for joy at the sight of the rogue trader, Von Valencius." I can't believe you actually roped the rogue trader into coming to your party. If the rogue trader raises a toast to your health, I'll start to believe you really are a princess and not just a smuggler with the gift of gab. Please take a, sh a seat, your ladyship. I will gladly accept your offer. Octavia, Octaviana draws a bottle out in front of the table. The glass is as thick as your finger and is covered in wax seals. With no exaggeration, this is the finest 
MS Atkins has never graced this bar. Jai personally acquired it, as she says, for a special occasion. It seems that you are the special occasion, your ladyship. The crowd around the table falls out and exchanging awkward looks. It would appear they are unaccustomed to drinking in the presence of lofty individuals such as you. Let us drink to the Lady of the Hour, Jai Hadari. The assembled group bursts into approving cheers, and the bar fills with the sound of clinking glasses. The Amasak takes exorbitantly expensive, sweeping you into a kaleidoscope of flavors. Tart floral bit bitterness, honeyed sweetness, and then other far more refined sensations that are nameless, owing to the small number who can afford to experience them. <laughs> Bravo, Octi. This Amasak will do me very well, very well indeed. Jai self-satisfied reply and listens general laughter. The tension at the table seems to loosen slightly. Octaviana, you and Jai are friends? Friends? She's my worst enemy, the vengeful spirit of retribution said to punish me for my youthful transgressions. Mistress Hadari has a special gift for knocking me off balance or dragging me into difficulty. I would have barred her from the Amasekis long ago if it weren't for her habit of tossing money around like confetti and of paying triple for anything she breaks. Do you see, Shireen? Do you see the petty, miserably callous, unforgiving friends the exalted one has sent me? So these are your associates. The precious roses in the garden of my soul and the gold little bees that bring honeyed riches to my treasure house. Yes, this is my crew of coal traders. The two identical ones are the trickster twins, my closest associates, Kor, our resident hothead, and his much wiser sister, Tora. Don't let her fool you, your ladyship. She's only calling... Uh, us, me, a precious rose, because you're here. When just us, I'm lucky if I get that arsehole with the gun. Because you are the asshole with the gun. If I dragged you out of as many scrapes as Jai has, that's not the name I'd be using for you, I can tell you that much. Pay no attention to his, your ladyship. Cora has nobody to blame but himself for that nickname. Uh oh. The man who has just approached the table is hideous by anyone's standards. A repulsive face, greasy hair, and bulging veins at his temples. His attempt at an amiable smile is so transparently false and off putting that your fingers itch to reach for your weapon. With a surprised look askance at you, he says, Mr. Sidari, allow me to wish you a happy Amara car. Master Mercy would not let such an occasion go unmarked, and he sends his warm wishes and a gift. Oh, Falco, I am much obliged and touched by your presence. May the fire in your heart burn forever bright and hot like the stars of the Grimnor system. Tell Mercy that his show of precious attention towards my humble self brought dew to my eyes and a song to my heart. Isn't Falco the one who stole Jai's cargo? The very same greasy piece of grok shit. But the stars of Grimnor system all died around 100,000 years ago. And the system around them are a true breeding ground of death. And who is this Mercy? Some big mysterious figure in the mission. The Kaz Balak has put him here to keep a handle on things and make sure the interests of the senior partners aren't forgotten. If anyone does become a bit forgetful, Mercy comes alone. Somebody dies. Everyone else panics and empties their pockets. Falco and Mercy aren't officially connected. Falco is just another prosperous mission agent like Jai and other people. But Falco is happy to do Mercy's dirtier for him. That's why he gets preferential treatment. And where is your present for Jai, Falco? The smuggler stares at you and blinking with his pale eyes, saying nothing. Then he arranges his mouth into a smile remarkable in his hideousness. Of course, your ladyship. And this gift is from me personally, Mr. Sidari. Well, don't stab her. As Falco turns away from the table, you see a snarl of feral hatred twist his already repulsive features. What were you talking about before I arrived? Even foes are bowing down before Jai Hadari. This is something worth celebrating. And what better way to celebrate than with the game? With stakes, naturally. Today is my Amara car, and that is what I want. Jai draws a stack of car plastic ties from pocket. They are decorated with the symbols of 
Fine, Magrines, holding the tiles in one hand and raises it in her glass with another glass. What do you think, Shereen? Does the rogue trader have anything she's willing to wager? You recognize the tiles in Jay's hands. It is set for Ten Cholo, a popular game among gamblers. Each player is dealt several tiles, which can be arranged into a pattern of a specific value by carefully matching up the maglines. Whoever has the highest value wins. Boys men love playing hand low, Tanto Low, which is usually won by luck or skill. I shall play. Watch out, your lady. Watch out for her ladyship, lad. She was awfully quick to agree just now. I have a sneaky, sneaky suspicion about how the rogue trader acquired all her countless riches. But I warn you now, playing for money is considered wrong on a freak, because gaming is tempting fate. So instead, we're going to play for wishes. And what were you we talking about before I arrived? Business, my dear Toro, whose mind never strays from the chilly peaks of the mountains of money she's made, was telling me the latest coal trade news. Exciting times are upon us. We're not the only ones being tested for weak spots. Ladane's set on putting the ultra... Ultra Requisitors out of business, and it looks like he's got Mercy's blessing to do it. The big beasts are picking out the small ones. I think things are only going to get more interesting from here on out. That means it's time for us to step up and become major players, eh? Poor Wings of Jay. I know you, a couple of Chegnars from the Ultra Requisitors. Ultra Requisitioners. They're dry as you like. We could tell them to cool their heels with us, and they'll be more than willing to chip at the other altars. We could take on Falco and even blow Vladame out an airlock, too. Core, my sweet, before you go chewing, fisling with the Chegners, you need to clear the altar and hide the pulses. If Vladame's playing all the lines, he won't touch me, but I don't want the ship to risk on you. There's chatter about the commission. The conversation quickly turns to an impenetrable mismatch of terms from the secret Argo of total traitors. You've been dealt a poor hand, you cannot make a high value arrangement from the tiles. I'm going to show my hand, though like Delta One loves me today. No luck. <laughs> Her hand is significantly better than yours or anyone else's. For my wish, I want everyone to drink to my good fortune. It has already guaranteed me a gift fit for a queen. Talking about you, Shireen, may fortune continue to smile on me. Everyone at the table eagerly raises their glasses. You join in before you're even aware that you have done so. A new stack of tiles is already waiting for you on the table. You realize the moment skip past without you knowing it. it. Seems the amnesic is somewhat stronger than you thought. Now this is definitely a good hand. One of the best you can get. Of course, she's cheating. Request a kiss when the opportunity presents itself. I love playing for high stakes rings, an excellent suggestion. This is a definite, I will definitely call in. Piles are dispersed around the table, forming piles in front of each player. You suddenly feel your body grow heavier. The treacherous Amasak is slowly robbing you of your clarity, of your thought, and dexterity. Yeah, you wouldn't be cheating by any chance. How could you even suggest such a thing? Has Jai Hadar really fallen so low that someone would think me capable of deceit? Jai brings her hand to her chest in a tragic gesture, the approving guffaws of her associates. Your hand is not especially good or bad. It is the kind of hand played by only by someone who has nothing left to bet. Before Ian says they're showing their hand, I'm announcing a condition. Seeing as my it's my amor card today, the only stake I'll play for is a dance. I'll play. Mine or worse, looks like you won, Shireen. I'll be delighted to grant you your wish. I plays on Jai's dark skin, glints up the summer am augmented of her throat. Moving with the grace of a sand snake, she holds your gaze and smiles mischievously. Her dark holes fall across her face, and you see the saucy glint rise through her alluring curtain of hair. This dance is called the Dance of the Captive Ravenian Girl. 
when the governor of Efrit Semokin of the Bright crushed the Revnian rebellion, the daughter of the rebel leader was brought to him, the beautiful Nyana. She danced for him, telling him of the struggle of her proud people, and they snatched a weapon from her guard's hand and aimed it at Selmakan. But spark of love that had kindled between them that they stopped the Faisalim from igniting in the cartridge. Both Nyana and Selmakan lived through that day and the many more days which they spent together. That is enough betting for me. My luck is very fickle today. Unlike Amasek, you can always trust Amasek. It always lies. Smiling sweetly, Jai presses your goblet into your hand. Her skin seems to glow from within, and the sparks of laughter in her eyes dance like flames. By the throne, you are so beautiful, Jai. And she whispers in here, I know. Fog swallows your mind, appealing ideas of other ways you could amuse yourself at this party. Turning to the maelstrom of synthetic, chaotic thoughts, you let all of the pervading merriment detriment to your fate. Oh. Thoughts tumble violently inside your head, periodically ricocheting off the inside of your skull and triggering bursts of piercing pain. Your tongue feels desiccated and shriveled in your mouth, and it scrapes painfully against your teeth. Light. Light is the enemy. Self-awareness returns unbidden, bringing with it an unexplicable sense of awkwardness. Your beleaguered body violently protests against the bare idea of getting out of your soft bed. <laughs> you hear a soft sigh beside you. Looking over, you see the dark hair fanned out across your pillow. The guy who is cozied up next to you is fast asleep. Fully dressed, just as you are. Perhaps she's not asleep at all. Shireen, you certainly know how to have a good time. You struggle to piece together a fragment of memories of last night's browsing. For some reason, you can clearly recall the ingratiating looks of the wardens as they tried to persuade you to stop, the cries of the beggars to whom you gave an obscenely amount of alms, and the stamping of the servitor that you rode around the station of Jai's unconcealed plea. You and I, we did not fall into bed to go just to sleep, did we? Don't you hear a remarkably fresh looking face to you, Jai Smurfs? You don't remember anything at all, Shereen? Neither do I, all the better. What a sweet and thrilling scenario we can manage to fill the gaps. I guess we should make ourselves presentable. I'm sorry to say you're right, Shereen. No matter how soft the bed or how pleasant the company, there is a line we must not cross, and I'm perilously close to doing exactly that. By getting a couple of bottles of delicious, delicious medicine for our aching heads. Ah, we're back on the void ship. We're in way out. So we're gonna go to the bridge. And that's where we're gonna stop. Next, we're going to head back to the plan to finish off the preparation for my crowning achievements as Lord Protectorate, Captain, blah, 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 and go from there. I want to thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you are, please leave a like, drop a comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. It means a lot of help Shadow Grown. I do appreciate it. Until next time, love you guys. Hope to see you again soon. Take care, and I'll talk to you later. Bye for now.